Hi and in this video I'll be taking you through how you can make your very own portable arcade stick. But before we start I'm just going to quickly run over all the parts needed to complete this project. So if you don't normally do things like this you'll have a better visual representation of what things look like. So for the electronics you're going to need one Raspberry Pi with a micro SD card, one arcade stick DIY kit that comes with a USB encoder, one mini HDMI male to HDMI female cable, and one 90 degree left angle USB type A to female cable. To make the battery pack you're going to need two LiPo battery chargers and power booster boards, one USB-C female splitter to dual micro USB cable, two 4.2 volt LiPo batteries or 18 6050 cells and one two pin switch. Also, I've provided a link in the description below where you can download all the files needed to 3D print your enclosure. So with all that out of the way, let's get straight to it. So first things first, we're going to start off by installing the software onto the Raspberry Pi. To do this, we're going to need to use our micro SD card. If I was you, I'd probably use a 4 to 6 gigabyte card, as I've heard anything larger can cause instability issues. We're going to insert the micro SD card into the computer. Once we have, we're going to make our way to the RetroPi website. Then we're going to navigate to the download page, where you're going to download the latest image for the model of Raspberry Pi that you are using. The folks at RetroPi do provide an excellent installation guide that I highly recommend you guys check out, but in this case, we're just going to skip to the parts we need, which is mounting the image to the Raspberry Pi. To do this, we're going to need to download and install another piece of software, so this is going to vary depending on the operating system you're using. Win32 disk imagery is what I use, but I'm sure all the others work the same. But before we can mount the image to the micro SD card, just make sure you extracted the image from the WinRAR folder. Once you have done that, what you want to do is open up the disk image you installed and select the image we just extracted. Then make sure the drive letter is pointing to the micro SD card that you want to mount to. Then when you're happy that everything seems to be in order and that you have double checked that the drive letter is pointing to the correct location, click right. This part can take several minutes. I have accelerated the footage so don't worry if yours takes a while. When it's finished though, safely remove your SD card and insert it into an unpowered Raspberry Pi. At this point, if I was you, I'd probably test out the hardware just to make sure that everything we just did went smoothly and that everything you're going to attach to the Raspberry Pi is working correctly. If it is, then let's move on to the cosmetics. I won't be going into too much detail on how I go about post-processing my 3D prints, but if you look on the internet, you see a whole range of different techniques you can use. Needless to say, I have my own ways of doing things, but for this build, I simply sanded down the prints the best I could. However, I did try and design the model as flat as possible, so that anyone who wanted to use power tools could speed up this process if they wanted to. Obviously, depending on the materials you printed with, you may run into some issues where you might melt the plastic, so just bear that in mind if you go down this path. I then added filler and did some more sanding until I was happy with the result. If memory serves, I think I went down to about 400 grit. I then primed and applied a few coats of satin white to every part, except the panel where the sticks and the buttons go. But if I was you, I'd still prime these parts as it makes the next step look way better. Moving on to the wood drain effect, I would have loved to have made this out of real wood, but I don't think many people at home have any woodworking tools, as I don't, so this would have been more trouble than it was worth. So I decided to use a technique I know to fake this effect. To do this, all you need is a sponge and some alcohol ink. 
All you have to do is put alcohol ink on a sponge and then apply it in strokes and then just keep blending this to get the desired look you like. Then the only thing you have to bear in mind when doing this is that you make sure that you're painting in the same direction as this will mimic the wood grain effect. When it comes to alcohol inks there are so many different colours to choose from but if you want to know the exact product I used in this project it's something called Tom's Holt Caramel. So with the paint and the alcohol ink left to dry, let's move on to creating the battery circuit. Depending on the Raspberry Pi you're using, it's going to determine if you're going to need one or two battery modules, as some of the older Raspberry Pi models require less power. Any board that needs two amps or more is going to need a second board. Alternatively, if you don't feel comfortable soldering anything, you could just get a long USB-C extension cable and then just plug that into a 5 volt phone charger when you want to power your Pi. But in the battery version, what you want to do is solder the LiPo battery or the battery holder positive red cable to the BAT plus pad. Then you want to solder a negative black cable to the BAT negative pad. After that, we're going to solder a black cable to the V out minus pad and then solder a red cable to the V out plus pad. Don't worry about the length of the cables at this point as you can always cut them down later. There are two important things at this stage of the game you need to be aware of. One, if you're using more than one battery per module as I am, you need to make sure the batteries are in parallel. And two, that the module needs to output no more than 5.3 volts so it doesn't damage your Raspberry Pi. So to make sure this doesn't happen, what you want to do is attach a multimeter to the V out plus and minus pads and then rotate the twizzly thing on the board with a screwdriver until it reads about 5 volts give or take. Then when you're happy that the battery module is complete and your paint is dried, it's time to start putting it all together. Start by placing your buttons into the main panel in any order you like. With mine I went with red, yellow, green, blue, as it seemed like the old arcades used to be laid out like this. So doing it this way would mean it would match up with the old arcade game tutorials. So once you've inserted all the buttons, flip over the panel so you can secure them down. After that, screw in the joystick module and then flip over the panel again so you can screw in the joystick thingy. And then what you want to do is push in all the cable connectors into the IO back panel and then use hot glue to secure them. Screw down the Raspberry Pi into the bottom panel. After that you want to insert the controller bay into the main case then insert the panel that we just attached the Raspberry Pi to. Once you've done that, it's just a matter of hot gluing all the parts inside the case wherever they'll fit. However, if I was you, I would try and hot glue the arcade encoder as far top left as possible as the USB cable has to do a U-turn to come back to the middle of the case. Once you're happy that everything inside is glued down and secure, what you want to do then is solder a black ground cable that comes from one of the battery packs to one of the pins on the switch. And then you want to solder another black ground cable to the other pin of the switch. After that you want to plug in all the I.O. cables from the back panel to the Raspberry Pi. As you can see I plugged in the arcade encoder to the USB extension cable, I connected the mini HDMI to the Raspberry Pi and then I connected the USB splitter to the battery packs. Ok I'm just going to quickly pause here for a sec. The next part is by no means the best way of powering your Raspberry Pi as if you do it incorrectly you can damage and in some cases even break it completely. But as often as the case when it comes to DIY projects, you kind of use the tools and parts that you have at the time. Alternatively, after finishing this project, 
it would have been safer and easier to get a USB-C cable and just cut off the end. I then soldered the cables to the red and black wires inside the larger wire. I then just connect the USB cable to the Raspberry Pi. On a side note, if you was to do it this way though, you would want to make sure the cable is rated for more than 3 amps, as not all USB cables are created equally. And with that warning out of the way, and with your switch turned off, what you want to do is solder or connect the positive red cable from your battery packs to one of the 5 volt pins on your Pi. I would highly recommend checking online for the pin layout of the board you're currently using before doing anything. Then you want to connect a ground cable coming from your switch to any ground pin on the Pi. Once you have done that, it's just a simple matter of connecting all the white plugs into the buttons and the arcade stick. Don't worry about the order they go in as it doesn't actually matter, as you'll be configuring your controller when you power on your Pi. Then once you're happy that everything is plugged in securely, I would take it for a test ride before closing up everything up for the last time. To attach the main panel to the main case, there are two hidden holes on the back that you can use to get a screwdriver in to insert some screws. I have taken the controller bay out for this shot so it's easier for you to see this in action. After that, simply screw down the back panel and you're good to go. If you've made it this far into the video, I would just like to say thank you. And if you need any help building your very own arcade stick, just hit me up in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to help. Anyway, until next time.